In this presentation, we will take a look at a job cost system, cost flow. We'll look at this cost flow a few different times, a few different ways, but now we want to get an overview of that cost flow. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So we get an idea of where we're going. We'll then look at the cost flow as we go through a comprehensive problem. When we go through a comprehensive problem, however, we often start to look at the very specific component that we are on in a fairly long problem. So as we do that, we want to keep an idea and keep an idea in our heads of what the overall cost flow will be so that we know when we're focusing in on one particular component, how it fits into the big picture. That'll give us some more context more motivation to learn the particular step that we are looking at. So whenever we think of manufacturing costs, we want to think of materials, overhead costs, and labor. And just about any inventory that we think of, not just in terms of if we are the manufacturer, they include these items in it. It's easy to think of inventory as materials. So if we think of a TV, we think of the materials that are in the TV. But notice that a lot of that is going to be due to overhead and labor, a lot of the cost, a lot of the value, a lot, a lot of what it is. If we just took the raw materials of a TV, that wouldn't amount to much <laughs> unless they were put together to format a TV. So uh, it's important to note when we do a manufacturing company, of course, we are providing some of those uh, products, some of that value. So we have the raw materials, we're going to have the overhead, we're going to have the labor. We're going to have to account for all three of those in the cost of whatever we make. If we make a TV, we got to include all of those in the cost of the TV. We have to track all those costs so that we can include them in the cost of our inventory. How will that work then? Well, if we start with our materials here, clearly we will buy the materials, whatever's going to be used to create our TV, the plastic and whatnot that are going to be used to create the TV. We're going to have those and that's going to be a part of inventory. And then we're going to start to work on those. And once we do that, we're going to put it into what we call work in process. So work in process is us starting to uh, convert whatever the raw materials are to the finished product, the TV. So now our materials over here are going to be taken from the materials and put into a work in process as we start the job, as we start to get going with the process of making. Now we want to keep in mind that this work in process, this is going to be an account called work in process. And when we're thinking about a job cost system, we're not going to be able to apply anything to this work in process unless we can, we can assign it to a job. So if it's within work in process, we need to have it be supported by a job. And that's going to be similar to if we had say an accounts receivable account, we can't apply anything to an accounts receivable account unless we also have a subsidiary ledger and a customer to apply it to. We need to know who uh, owes us the money. But when we go to a job cost system for work and process, it's similar. If I put those materials from the materials to the work and process account, I need to know which job that we're working on. And so that's going to be our criteria. Now, if it's direct labor, if we're making, say, let's go back to the guitars, if we're making a guitar and we're putting the wood in the guitar, we know exactly which guitar the wood's going to. On the other hand, if we're talking about some of these materials that we don't know exactly which uh, guitar it's going to, things like glue, things like small uh, components that are going to be included in the guitar, it's not worth us to track exactly which guitar they go to. We're not going to get a requisition form and say, I need this specific amount of, uh, of glue to put together this guitar. It, it would be not cost effective to do so. So what we'll do is we'll take some of this material and we'll put it into overhead. We can't put it up here yet. We can't put it into the work and process account because we don't. We can't assign it to a particular job and nothing goes over here until we can assign it to a particular job. This overhead is also gonna include any other type of overhead that we have. So when we think of overhead in general, 
Uh, these are all types of things that we basically expenses on the warehouse where we make things. So that's going to include things like depreciation on the warehouse. If we have a supervisor salary in the warehouse, we don't know which uh, job that they're, they're working on. So it's going to go into overhead. If we have maintenance in the warehouse, then all of that's going to go to some inventory, but we don't know which job to assign it to. So it's going to be in there. If we have utilities in the warehouse, it's going to be in overhead. And that overhead then, of course, uh, is going to be a cost that will be included in overhead. Then we're going to take that overhead and we will assign it to the work in process. How will we do that? That's going to be one of the things that we'll have to figure out because we cannot just take this overhead and assign it to work in process. We can journalize it in there and put it into that account, but we need to know which job it goes to. And that's going to be one of our one of our problems. One of the things that we'll have to figure out from this step here uh, to assigning the overhead to a job. We're going to have to figure out which job gets how much overhead because some of the guitars are custom guitars. Some of them are more specialized than others. It would be similar if we had like a um, construction company. Some of them that are larger companies, some of them are smaller projects and larger projects. We need to know how much of the supervisor salary or how much of the small materials we use, how much of the, of the truck and gas possibly would go into each individual job when they're not all the same in size and we don't have any way to assign them particularly to each job. So that's going to be one of our problems that we'll talk through as we work through the job cost system. The labor, same thing, we're gonna take the labor and we're gonna assign it to the work in process. And that's gonna be direct labor. So anytime we have someone working on a particular guitar, it's pretty easy for us to see which job, which guitar that person is working on and therefore be able to assign their, their cost directly to work in process and back it up by job cost sheets. However, we may have some people working in the warehouse that we cannot assign to a particular job. And those would be things like possibly the supervisor salary, uh, possibly the maintenance in in the uh, in the in there, because we don't know uh, which job it goes to, and therefore we're going to say, well, it's still labor. It's going to be labor. We're going to have payroll happening, uh, but some of that labor is going to be directly to the job, direct labor, and some of it will be indirect. If we can't assign it directly to the job, then we're going to include it as well in this overhead. So you can see this overhead is a big bucket of stuff that basically we cannot assign or it would be too not cost effective to assign directly to a particular job and therefore we will use some other format. Once we have these items in work and process, at some point in time, we are going to finish them within the work and process and we can then transfer them to the finished goods. So once we're in finished goods, then the finished goods is going to include all of these items, raw materials, uh, overhead and labor within the job, but we're basically going to have a job that will be completed and that job will be in finished goods. We'll have the, the concept or the account of finished goods. Note that these two accounts on the general ledger are just going to be one account on the, on the general ledger. We're going to have work in process, but within work in process, it's made up of a job cost sheets. So these are like sub ledgers that are, that are backing it up in a similar way as accounts receivable would be one account on the general ledger, but it's supported by a subsidiary ledger breaking that information up by um, customer. So in this case, all of these accounts, remember, are going to be broken up or backed up, supported by a general ledger account, breaking the information out by date. But these are also going to be supported by another account, another ledger, another uh, source document, that's going to give us the information uh, in terms of jobs. So the finished goods then is going to be one number. We're going to transfer it from work and process to finished goods, but we will still know which jobs are going to be applied to the finished goods. And those jobs, of course, are made up of materials, overhead and labor. And then once we have the finished goods, we're kind of at the end product now. Now we can sell them. If we're talking about guitars, uh, we can sell them now, right? So now is the final step, which is similar to a merchandising company we sell and that'll go to cost of goods sold now as we go through this process it's it's easy for us to forget about just the normal sales journal entry because this whole process leads up of course to us selling the inventory that's the point of the business uh, but none of this is tracking the sales price we may use the cost sheets to derive the sales price 
but the sales price is not directly related to what we're tracking here. We're tracking the cost. So at the end of the day, the last journal entry is going to be increasing sales, credit to sales and debit the accounts receivable or cash. And, and none of that, that journal entry is not being represented here because we don't know exactly what the sales price is based on this information. What will be here is when we make a sale in a perpetual system, the second half of that journal entry is debit to cost of goods sold, the expense related to the sale. That's what's here. And a credit to inventory, a reduction of the asset related to the sale. And of course, that cost of goods sold then is going to be comprised of jobs that we're going to be able, we're selling, you know, a particular job that we made, particular guitars or particular construction jobs. And those jobs consisting of materials, overhead, and labor.